Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Maria Lazarevic, and I'm a PhD uh, candidate at the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering in Skopje at the San Cyril and Methodius University. So I'm going to present uh, today uh, the work uh, done from our university uh, regarding the work package three in the Hydroflex project. So the focus of the presentation is the development of a tool for hydraulic and mechanical design of a guide vane system. This is work done by me, uh, the other PhD candidate at Ukim, Filip Stoikovsky, uh, and we are advised by our mentor, uh, Professor Zoran Markov. So the diversity of the uh, energy production uh, which needs to be, um, uh, which needs to match the energy demand uh, in order to achieve uh, grid balance, um, requires actually um, operation over um, uh, different uh, flow rates and uh, different uh, heads. So. Um, maintain a high efficiency of the turbine at uh, um, a high efficiency turbine at uh, this off design condition and also to support mechanical loads an optimization of the turbine components is needed uh, because of this uh, the main task of uh, of our university was to develop to develop a parametric design tool for developing the geometry uh, of the guide vanes uh, system, but also the geometry of the stationary parts of the uh, turbine. That is the spiral casing and the uh, stay vanes. This parametric design tool is developed in uh, MATLAB and is based on parametrization in order to um, be connected with the CFD software ANSYS uh, workbench. The main aim is to later do uh, perform uh, uh, optimization of the uh, guideline geometry by applying certain uh, automation, uh, automated optimization techniques in our in ANSYS workbench. So this tool uh, uses MATLAB on one side uh, and uh, the CFD software ANSYS uh, workbench on the other side, where the numerical analysis, analysis is performed. So the developed code uh, in MATLAB uses, uh, takes into account uh, the conditions in front of the runner. That is to be uh, the uh, operating conditions, head flow, rate and runner rotational speed at the best efficiency point. And it also takes account uh, into account the geometry parameters of the runners at the inland. This was needed uh, to obtain the uh, flow conditions uh, at the runner inlet, actually the velocity uh, triangles, because uh, having in mind that the circulation in front of the runner preserves in the wind, windless uh, space, we can then uh, use these flow conditions to obtain uh, the uh, geometry, uh, geometrical parameters of the guide wings and the flow conditions uh, at the guide wing inlet and outlet. So by calculating the previous uh, flow conditions in front of the runner, and using the guide vein uh, height as an input variable parameter, uh, and using also uh, added uh, empirical data, we calculate the guide vein inlet and outlet diameter of the cascade and the uh, diameter of the axis where the guide veins are positioned. We will also need the maximal, uh, maximum angle opening uh, which will be further used to obtain a new point of uh, rotation of the guide wings. So the main uh, aim was to 
make uh, the uh, to make the more flexible um, change of uh, the guideways design. That's why uh, the guideway hydrofoil is uh, geometrically parametrized by using the Bezier curves. So actually the chord equation and then the uh, thickness distribution equation and camber line uh, are uh, parametrized. In this case, uh, we used uh, the chord angle, um, later named as uh, phi, and the location of the maximum uh, uh, hydrofoil thickness, actually guide vein thickness, as variable input parameters. And the product is uh, a shape of the, of, uh, the guide vein, which depends on these two input variables. We will later see uh, what, uh, how this affects the guideline shape. In order to obtain the whole radial cascade, only the guideline's overlap uh, is um, an input in the MATLAB code. In, and based on that, the number of guideways are calculated. So the whole radial cascade is um, developed. The same principle of uh, geometry parametrization by using Bezier curves and actually parametrizing uh, the chord equation, the thickness distribution equation, we get the shape of the stay vein. But, but here we don't change uh, parameters. So we keep uh, the uh, chord angle phi to be constant in this case. Um, we can change the thickness and the location of the maximum uh, thickness. And uh, input parameters which are needed are the stay vein, inlet, and outlet diameter. So on the same principle, we can obtain the geometry of the stay vein. In the first phase, we use um, the exact number of uh, guide wings and stay wings as in the Francis 99 turbine. Uh, the spiral casing uh, is initially uh, designed uh, by using the free vertex uh, theory. Uh, and uh, in order to obtain the required inlet flow condition conditions, uh, and the radius of the X each uh, section is determined by the outlet tangential velocity. But uh, this is only the initial, initial design. Uh, further corrections will be made in order to obtain a, realist, a more realistic uh, construction because uh, we only get the effective surfaces of the uh, cross sections of the spiral casing. So all of this um, is obtained in MATLAB, the guide wing shape, stay wing shape, and the spiral casing um, outer and inlet uh, traje trajectory that is obtained in MATLAB, which actually generates the coordinates of this curve. Then by using uh, a Python script, which is connected uh, with ANSYS uh, workbench. This is needed uh, to uh, obtain this output file, text file of the coordinates of the uh, guide vein and stain vein profile and the spiral casing um, and the spiral casing uh, tra trajectories. Uh, space claim is used since it has a scripting functions uh, in order to automate all of this process. Since the, we want to um, change input variable parameters later, as I mentioned, uh, the chord uh, angle and the location of the maximum thickness in order to obtain different shapes of guide, vein, guide which will be later tested. 
So this is connected with space clean, which generates the uh, geometry of the guide vein system and the other stationary parts. And uh, then, uh, firstly, the guide vein is positioned at low guide vein opening in order to um, calculate uh, a new, to suggest a new pivot point where the uh, hydraulic torque at this low guide vein opening would be zero. Then the other numerical simulations are done with the new uh, pivot point for different guide vein openings around that point. The post-processing results are, connect, uh, are related to the uh, optimization criteria, which will be later uh, explained. So this is the uh, parameter set established in uh, ANSYS workbench, the simulation at low guide vein opening, and then simulations for different design uh, points uh, for uh, different um, input variables. So only the automatic generation of the guide vein system in space clean by using Python scripts. And by changing input variables, including guide vein opening and uh, the parameters which affect the guide vein shape. So the guide vein uh, tool is such that um, variable par parameters are first the energy parameters, the flow, the net head, and the uh, runner rotational speed. But uh, and the but if we keep them constant, then we changed only the parameters that uh, directly affect the guide vein shape. So these are the variable uh, parameters, energy, then the uh, inlet diameter of the runner, and uh, the guide vein height. Uh, if we keep this constant in first uh, approximation, we only changed the location of the maximal maximum thickness on the port and uh, the uh, court angle. Uh, the range of variation of this uh, 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 variable parameters is 14 to 20 degrees for the court angle. And we see on these uh, photos uh, that for 35% uh, uh, location of the maximum uh, thickness, um, for the operating conditions in the best efficiency point, as in the Francis 99 uh, turbine. Uh, we only change the court angle in this case from 14 degrees, uh, 70 degrees, and uh, 20 degrees, and we achieve different uh, guide veins shape. But uh, in this case, uh, the maximum thickness location is kept constant. Uh, 35%. So the output parameters from the simulations uh, would be the uh, turbine, turbine efficiency, the guide vein's pressure drop, and the guide vein cascade efficiency, based on which uh, the optimization will be done. But that is uh, in the next step. These are only the uh, optimization criteria. Uh, when an optimal design of the guide vein will be che uh, chosen, uh, the, um, it should be validated uh, experimentally. Uh, so by doing measurements in the laboratory, motor power laboratory in Trondheim, uh, of the velocity 
pressure drop of the guide wings, and we would like to calculate turbine efficiency and measure the hydraulic torque on the guide wing. Uh, that will be needed uh, for uh, validating the numerical model and to be sure that we uh, provided the optimal guide wing geometry. So we can conclude that uh, since the uh, turbine geometry can be uh, described in terms of parameters, the best way uh, to do an optimization is by um, parameterization, in this case uh, done by using uh, MATLAB and ANSYS uh, workbench, which have these capabilities. The main aim was uh, to, the main aim is uh, to uh, obtain an optimal geometry of the guide wing. Um, and uh, to propose uh, initial design of the spiral casing and the stay wings, which would prove better uh, uh, performance from the uh, Francis 99. Um, the tool um, provides numerical analysis of the pull field and the uh, stresses. So output parameters could be uh, also stresses and uh, deformation. And because of the scripting capabilities, uh, an automation of the process was uh, enabled, which, is, um, which will provide a faster optimization. The next step, the next step uh, is to test uh, this tool by changing uh, the input parameters uh, previously mentioned in order to obtain different guide wing designs. Uh, first, only for the operating conditions in best efficiency uh, point, as in the Francis 99 turbine. And um, to uh, compare uh, the output uh, parameters from this simulation, simulations for the uh, generated guide wing designs. When the optimal Bedouin geometry is uh, a short experimental validation of the design can be made. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Maria. Um, okay. I, everyone is invite, invited now to give their comments and questions. We had very short and small interruptions of your uh, audio so uh, uh, but yeah I now it's okay we were, now it's okay but i think i think we were able to follow your presentation well it was just a so. short interruption perhaps it's a connection Maybe problem there are some technical yes here yes. with the internet mm -hmm. so please everybody feel free to comment or pose a question I have a question here concerning the positioning of the uh, guide wings um, um, relative to the stay wings. Uh, the wake, uh, the wakes of the stay wings are uh, strongly influencing the flow and losses around the guide wings. Have you optimized uh, that positioning? Um, just a second. That's a good question, Anders. Thank you. Maria? Uh, it was uh, chosen um, um, the angle of the stay, uh, stay, the athlete angle of the stay wing to be uh, a constant of uh, 30 degrees. Uh, I, I'm not sure if you understand correctly the question, Maria, but uh, the question was, uh, mm -hmm. what was the angular position between the guide wings uh, and the stay wings? How, where in reference to the wake coming from the stay wings were the guide wings positioned, uh, perhaps in their best efficiency uh, opening? Yes, in the best efficiency point. 
is the position is in, in the best efficiency point. Is the wake from the stay wings uh, um, striking straight into the the tip of the of the guide wing at the leading edge? At the stagnation point, or is the wake going on the pressure or suction side? Do you have that information? Um, I'm not really in this moment because uh, the tool is developed with uh, uh, my other colleague. Yes, I can uh, give you an answer for that. Uh, the Stavens, uh, the first initial design is for the best efficiency uh, point where um, a shock-free entrance into the guide lens is provided. Uh, but the code for the Stavens is also um, uh, a parameter, a geometry parameter base where the outlet diameter of the Stavens is variable. And so we can um, uh, uh, shrink or expand the the circumference of the staving, so we can um, uh, later examine the weights and the flow uh, um, disruptions behind the staving, which will enter in the guidance. This is the initial uh, start as the best efficiency point. The streamlines are calculated, the angles of the streamlines are calculated, so the guidelines are uh, primarily designed for best efficiency point to have a shock-free zero incidence uh, losses at uh, the entrance, yeah. Do you, do you plan to, to vary the location of the guideways in the circumferential direction so that it goes in and out of the wake of the stayways? Yes, yes. The, all the circumferences of the guideways and the stayways are variable parameters. All right. Um, Zoran here, uh, Markov. Uh, maybe we have some pictures to show you, but I don't know if you can get them right now. Just uh, to see the positions that the, the calculations were made. Anders, did we manage to, to answer your question? Yes, uh, I understand that uh, it uh, will be investigated and uh, um, optimized uh, in a later stage. I think it's very important, uh, this issue, uh, uh, also, not, not only the, the shape of the guidelines. Yeah. Do you yeah. have any, any tips or... Uh... Um, yeah, do you have tips for where it should be positioned, Anders? I think this is uh, when uh, uh, when it's an opportunity now to to test it. It uh, it should mm. be tested. Uh, use use that opportunity and be aware of that issue. Yeah. Thank you. Just uh, come, Jan Turi here. Um, the guideway cascade, of course, it interacts both with the, the stayway cascade and also with the, the runner. Uh, so the optimal uh, angle for the for the guideway will depend on the specific speed. Uh, for high head uh, machines, the angle is uh, small. For uh, uh, low head, the angle is high. So uh, you, you have to consider both the Steven cascade and the runner when you look at uh, the, to optimize the guide wing. Yes. Uh, yes, simulations will, will be performed, including the, the runner, of course. Not only the stationary parts of the turbine. As Zoran again here, so the tool should work for every specific speed. So that's why we are testing now on some already manufactured turbines that we have in uh, here in the country. 
and uh, we have obtained all the designs. And so we are trying to see if this tool is actually getting the geometry that the manufacturers or the designers of those turbines that were built in the last uh, 10, 10, 10 years, 10, 15 years, which have different specific speeds. No, no, not so much high head Francis, so we'll have uh, various uh, heads for Francis turbines to check with. Yes, the tool will be tested for different uh, specific speeds, of course. Mm -hmm. Anyone else having a question or a comment? Feel free. We have a question. Okay, I'll, I'll just uh, interrupt here. We have a question from uh, Henning Lisaker from Rainpower. Um, he was not able to pose his question uh, due to the interruption. So I'll just read the question. The question is for Jesslyn. Jesslyn, are you here? Yes, I'm here. All right, can you see the question in the chat? Uh, if not, I, I'm just gonna read it loud. Yeah. So he's asking, um, have you tested the influence of the Sigma number in the calculations and will this be a part of the experiments in the lab? So we have briefly discussed this, but uh, yeah, please, if you just answer the question once again. Uh, nope, I don't think we have we have considered sigma number for the numerical analysis. And, uh, for experiments, uh, I am not sure at the moment. Yeah, I will just comment here. We're uh, experiencing some difficulties in the lab um, with some valves. Uh, we're working on, on solving that problem Hopefully, if the problem is solved uh, before you do your experiments, then uh, gravitational performance can be tested as well. So um, if there is time, maybe it will be interesting for you to, to look at the sigma number effects as well on, on your design. Yes, OK, sure. Yeah. All right, uh, we're done with the first part now. I propose that we have uh, 